This is such a wild story. I don't know how to open for it. How do I open for such a story? How do because this doesn't even sound, sound real. When I put the title on this video, the title is going to what is it going to be? Ukraine invades Russia. People are going to see that. They're going to roll their eyes and they're going to keep going. They're not going to believe me. Ukraine invades Russia. What do I say? R Russian Russian insurgents because a lot of these people are former Russian military that are that are invading. They, I mean, we got That's the Freedom right. of Russia Legion. Occurred. We got the Russian Volunteer Fleming Corps, even though they're more Nazi. Five dollars. It's a special military operation. Yeah, I mean, I guess we could call it a Ukrainian special military operation into Russia. Maybe a counter-terrorist operation. But it's, I don't even know how to open. I don't know how to sell this. I don't know how to pitch it to a, to a wider audience. So I will t just, I'll just tell you straight up. So uh, earlier today, in the wee early mo morning hours and uh, late last night, uh, there was an invasion of Russia. And when I say invasion of Russia, I don't mean under the Russian constitution, technically, you know, Zaporozhye and Kherson and Donetsk and Luhansk and Crimea count as Russia. So anytime Ukraine takes a little bit of territory back, it's a, no, I don't mean that ideological hoo-ha nonsense. I don't mean what Russia and state TV would call an invasion of Russia. I don't mean that. I mean what is internationally recognized as Russian territory. Nothing that they've taken from Ukraine illegally, nothing that they've captured through the 2014 Crimean invasion or afterwards. We're talking about Belgorod province. Uh, if you wanna know where Belgorod is, one second. Uh, where's a good, maybe I can do map. Wait, will it show my location if I go to map? No, it won't, wait. Will it, will it? I'd really like to not dox myself. No, it won't, okay, good. So Belgorod, for those of you who don't know, is right here. It's right above Kharkiv. Actually, about two weeks ago, I was not far from Belgorod. I went to Kharkiv and I went into the area up here in this area. I won't say exactly where uh, to do an interview with a right sector nationalist Ukrainian soldier about right sector's ideology and uh, about him fighting in Bakhmut against Wagner. If you're looking for that interview, it should be released by the end of the month. Hopefully we're aiming for that. And it'll be on my main channel, Dylan Burns TV. But here, around here, there was an incursion into what is internationally recognized as Russian territory. I think the free map, uh, deep state map, uh, not free map, deep state map uh, posted a version of this that shows the area that is currently contested. And they don't know if the Ukrainians control it, if, if the Russians control it. A lot of this is uh, still up in the air. A lot of this is incredibly blurry. Uh, my internet apparently here in the Kiev Oblast is incredibly blurry as it taking forever to load this website. Uh, yep, here it is. Here, here it is. Here it is. 31 square kilometers of territory. Okay, so as you can see, this area that's green shows liberated Ukrainian territory. Uh, the areas uh, that are red shows Russian controlled territory in Ukraine. That little territory, that little piece of... <laughs> <laughs> sorry it's just so funny that tiny little piece of gray territory across the border is what the is what the ukrainians have supposedly captured we don't know exactly how much of this has been captured we don't know how strong the control of this area is um the units that did this operation uh are there's two uh organizations that we know of that were involved in this operation so um the two wacky groups are the Russian Volunteer Corps, which was founded by a, yeah, I'll just be honest, a neo-Nazi uh, who was in the football hooligan scene. This is the smaller group. I think there's like 40 people in this. And the larger group, which is uh, not a neo-Nazi organization, but is made up of uh, Russian soldiers who have defected to the Ukrainian side and has picked up arms, as well as other Russians who have joined up with the Freedom of Russia Legion. This is the larger group that has crossed the border uh, into uh, the uh, into the Russian, well, I guess what we're going to be calling now the Belgorod Autonomous Republic. Um, these are just two of the groups. A lot of them are Russians. Why they're using Russians? Why they're not using like Azov or other groups? Well, we don't know exactly why. The Ukrainians are very tight-lipped about the whole situation, but I would imagine the reason why they're doing it is so they can advertise themselves as saying, hey, look, 
Uh, it wasn't us. We didn't invade Russia. It was the Russians who went in there and started liberating their own territory. I think there's a propaganda artic uh, angle to this that'll work very well uh, in the domestic uh, Ukrainian sphere, uh, internationally. It's pretty humiliating to not only have Russia itself be invaded and occupied, but to have uh, soldiers formally serving in your own military do it defectors and people of your own country russians uh people who have who lived in russia or from russian families who have joined the freedom of russia legion uh let's look at some of the uh finer details uh for this uh here is uh what russian state tv is saying in response to this they're saying that you know this all, all this noise all this nonsense don't worry about it because this was a trap this is a trap for the Freedom of Russian Legion. This is a trap for uh, the Russian Volunteer Corps. This is a trap for the Ukrainians. Don't worry about it. We got everything under control. Now, what confuses me about this statement is that if it's a trap, why are you announcing that it's a trap? If it is a trap, why, while they're still in Russian territory, sitting in your what they're claiming to be your brilliant trap, why would you openly say this is a trap? This is like the mouse is approaching the mouse trap and you yell loudly, that's a mouse trap. It doesn't make any sense. Why would you do that? It's probably just an excuse they're using to explain why uh, the Ukrainian military was so easily able to cross into Russian uh, territory, into internationally recognized Russian territory. And let me be clear, they're going to need a good excuse because... The footage coming out from uh, this area is wild. Uh, here's an example of it. Here are uh, Russian civilians fleeing the Belgorod Oblast, so many of them just driving in their civilian cars. There's another picture that I saw circulating around of just like hundreds upon hundreds of cars lined up trying to get out of the Belgorod Oblast because they're now fearful of Ukrainian-backed saboteurs, uh, freedom of Russia or any type of Russian partisan activity from anti-war activists, and the fact that the war is being brought to their oblast, to their community, to their uh, area. And so now they're running away. And these people are obviously are going to be wanting an explanation as to why they have to flee their community. Again, this war was supposed to last a week. When you look at a lot of the early war propaganda, it was very much advertising as a short war where they quickly go in, do the quote unquote denazification, get out, everything's fixed. They got their own government in Kiev now and they don't need to worry about the Western degeneracy. That has not come to pass. But not only has that not come to pass, but now the war that they thought was going to be taken to the heart of Ukrainian society, to Kiev, to Lviv, to Odessa, to all these locations all around Ukraine is now being brought to them. And that's going to be a big shock to the system because we haven't had anything like this happen yet in the war. Well, technically, according to the Russian constitution, the Ukrainians have occupied Russian territory because the Russians now consider all of Zaporozhye, all of Kherson, all of Donetsk, all of Luhansk, all of Crimea to be part of Russia. But in actuality, this is the first part of Russia that has been occupied by the Ukrainians, with all that other territory being internationally recognized as Ukrainian territory being liberated by the Ukrainian army. It's pretty wild, man. And Russian Telegram is unironically panicking. I mean, they are going crazy. I, I don't know if we have a few of the uh, Telegram posts. Uh, if somebody does in chat, you can link them. But let me just go through a few other uh, tidbits that came out of this. For example... Uh, we now have the first ever vehicle captured in Russian territory by the Freedom of Russian Legion, or I think, uh, I don't actually see, we think yeah. we see the symbol. I actually, I think that's the Russian Volunteer Corps. I can see the top of what I think their symbol is. Uh, this is their symbol, this little sword thing, and I think I see the top of the sword. Um, this is the first Russian armored vehicle captured within internationally recognized Russian territory. I think there's an English translation for this video as well. Um, where did I post it? I think I posted it down below this post. And Twitter hates me. Thank you so much, Mr. Musk. I love your website. I love how it doesn't work. I love how I can't access the materials that I set up for stream. Here it is. Нет. Я, потому что тяги нет. 
There is no thrust. My dad was telling me to become a tractor driver, but no, I became in the military. A trophy. <laughs> Fantastic. Well, you get the idea. You get the a idea. Curd is a curd. Lemmy donated fifteen dollars. Lemmy has donated fifteen dollars. RT in six months. The red square is a huge trap. The Ukrainian parade rolling over it is doomed. That's true. That's true. Look, they took one of the decoy Putin's hostage. That's not the real Putin. That's not the real Putin at all. Oh no 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 no! They they assassinated one of the clones of one of the top Russian generals. You don't understand. You don't understand. Okay. That that is that they didn't take the real Saint Petersburg. That that is a fake one that was made out of cardboard, Looney Tune style, uh, a few miles away from the actual Saint Petersburg. Thank you so much for the fifteen dollar donation, Fleming. Um, what 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 really gets me about this entire situation, um, is not the you know the fear of oh wait are the Ukrainians now going to capture the nuclear arsenal? It's not the um the Russian casualties that have been taken or the reaction from the Russians themselves, where it really gets me about the situation is that this war has spiraled out of control more and more and more and more for the Russians. They were expecting a five week maximum military incursion into Ukraine, where they quickly go in, crush the government in Kiev, then they get out the new government in tow, one that is friendly to their interests, uh, where they can now eventually in the future annex the Ukrainian state as they deny its essence as a nation state. The same way why the same in the same way that Putin wants to one day annex Belarus and create one United State. That's what they expected. What they have instead gotten is almost one and a half years of bloodshed, over 100,000 to 200,000 military casualties, them getting humiliated on the world stage, uh, having the flagship of their fleet, fleet uh, the Black Sea Fleet, getting sunk in the Sea of Azov, and just terrible, terrible military outcomes all around. They didn't achieve uh, demilitarization. They didn't achieve the capture of the capital. They didn't achieve, achieve regime change. They didn't achieve the capture of all of Luhansk or Donetsk. They didn't achieve any of the objectives they set out for themselves for the entirety of the war. And the few objectives that they have captured, which isn't the big objectives, but like take this tiny city, take this other smaller city, or maybe take Mariupol, for example, one of the few large cities that they still have control of when it comes to uh, what they've captured since uh, the 2022 invasion. Uh, those all came with extremely high cost. For example, the capture of Bakhmut, a city pre-war population of 70,000, very small, no large-scale strategic significance, nothing more but a stepping stone forward for the Russians' advance. They finally capture it after 10 months when it was supposed to take like five days to capture under the original, original Russian war plan. 10 months to capture it. 10 months! A city of not very much Burns strategic significance, immoral, but extreme moral significance because of how much they paid in order to capture it in the first place. And they've kept getting hammered left, right, and center. And now it has gotten so bad that the Ukrainians feel comfortable enough to launch incursions into Russian territory. Because let me be clear, this is not going to lead to a long-term occupation of Belgorod. Now... I mean, it's there's a small chance that that could happen, but I don't think that that is a legitimate goal currently of the Ukrainian armed forces is to go and take large swaths of the territory at the moment. We know that Zelensky has discussed in the past taking Russian territory in order to trade it uh, with them uh, for Ukrainian territory back. We know from, I think it was the Washington Post or another American news publication that published these stories of what he suggested in private, uh, but we don't, uh, have enough evidence presented currently to think that that is what this is for. Currently, all we know is that this is an incursion into Russian uh, territory, what is recognized as Russian territory internationally. Why are they doing this is the one question I don't see a lot of people asking. 
um i see a lot of people like acting uh, really shocked but i don't see a lot of follow-up questions of exactly why they are doing this and the few people who do ask why they are doing this it's simply to divert from the propaganda victory of Bakhmut. That's the only reason I see being really speculated on online. So I wanted to throw a few others. And I'm not saying nobody's speculating. It's just from my circles in the weird Twitch streamer, uh, semi-war report, whatever you want to call me, in my community, in my area, I don't see a lot of people asking. So I think the first reason, which everybody's already talked about a little bit on Twitter, um, not everybody, but, but people I've talked about a little bit on Twitter, is... They're diverting away from the propaganda, quote unquote, victory of the Russians taking occurred. Bakhmut. The Russians just captured it. No chump change gave Mortala a tier one subscription. If enough Russian land gets taken, do you think it could actually give Ukraine enough leverage to do negotiations? Thanks so much for the tier one sub. No chump change. I'll answer that question in a second. Uh, you just gifted another tier one sub too. Like, we'll give you a back your land if you occurred. give us back all ours. No chump change gave Sook CCKKKK a tier one subscription. Like, we'll give you back your land if you give us back all of ours? Or so, do you think negotiations are still completely out of the question AT? Man, that is a long question. Okay, so first let me, let me finish uh, talking about why I think they're doing this. The first reason is obvious. It takes away from any propaganda victory that the Russians could have garnered from Bakhmut. They captured Bakhmut yesterday. Even though their flanks in the north and the south are kind of shaky and they've crumbled a little bit and the Ukrainians have recaptured territory that took the Russians months to capture, the city itself they have finally captured after 10 months of fighting, tens upon thousands of casualties, and much, much more effort and material than they originally expected to expend taking Bakhmut, a city of very little, little general strategic significance, a stepping stone, if you will. But... The main thing it could provide the Russians is a victory. There haven't been many Russian victories as of late. The last one I can think of is when they captured Severodonetsk and Lysychansk. But everything else has been, for example, them falling back from Kiev or them getting pushed out of the Kharkiv Oblast, which was a surprising counteroffensive that nobody expected. Uh, or them being pushed over the Dnepro River during the counteroffensive in Kherson, which saw the Ukrainians capture back the only provincial capital the Russians have captured for the entirety of the war. So they didn't have many victories in a while. And so Bakhmut gave them a victory. But then right after they got this victory, even if it was painful, even if it probably wasn't worth it, I know Igor Gurkin talked about recently, he's the former defense minister for the Donetsk People's Republic, former FSB uh, uh, agent. He talked about how it probably wasn't worth the uh, massive toll that it took on the Russian armed forces. But 24 hours... After this, this news breaks of the Ukrainian military, of Russian partisans, Russian militias, anti-Putinist militias, invading Russia proper and occupying ter territory in Belgorod. Any propaganda victory that they could have irked out of this orange that they've been trying to juice for 10 months evaporated almost instantaneously. Now, the great mighty Russian bear has been invaded by a few hundred uh, anti-Putinist fighters, its own citizens, with, in some instances, American-provided material. It's embarrassing. It's sad. It's extremely sad. And now, all the talk about Bakhmut has evaporated overnight. I saw David Sachs and, and Jackson Hinkle and all the other people going endlessly about Bakhmut, how it was a gigantic victory. All of that has disappeared. And now it's all either trying to cope about these people taking over Russian territory or them freaking out about how this could possibly happen. We have Prigozhin uh, on Russian social media saying that this is a further example of the Russian military's corruption, of its ineptitude and its inability to protect the Russian state. And even though he's saying that most likely for political reasons to continue to jostle with them and their ongoing rivalry, he's not wrong. He's not wrong. So the propaganda effect is clear. Uh, the one second where the Russians thought they could breathe a moment and say victory has been snatched out of them almost instantaneously by the Ukrainians bringing the fight to them through an unlikely proxy. Now, that's the first reason. The second reason, and I'm not a military expert, mind you, but from what I've been told about this, I do think it is a good question to ask 
what if this is so politically embarrassing for Putin, or this is so uh, 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 much of a smear on the Russian Ministry of Defense as Prigozhin is trying to weaponize it against them in their ongoing robbery, that they overreact to troop redeployments to counter this incursion. Now, they're going to have to send in troop redeployments and go after them no matter what. And there's already footage popping up everywhere, much of it unverified. And that's part of the reason why we're not watching footage of any of this right now, is much of this footage is still unverified. We see footage that is verified, but it's next to footage that isn't verified um, of Russian troop, troop redeployments happening. And that is going to, to some extent, strain the Russian resources. But what if they overdeploy, over redeploy troops, not only to deal with this incursion, but to all of the locations across the entire border regions in order to try to prevent an incident like this happening again. Because if it's this embarrassing for the Russians, what stops the Ukrainians from taking back out these Russian fighters, these, these Russian fighters in Ukrainian service, and doing it again at another location across the border, and again at another location? And therefore, the, the Ukrainians have turned into almost like fallout raiders, just sending, sending a, a crowd here, bring them back crowd there, bring them back, humiliating them over and over and over again in these cross-border incursions, which we already know that saboteurs have been engaged in activity in Russia itself for a while. So the fact that this happened, while it's, it's mind-boggling because of the, in, enormous, uh, the enormous historical statement of Russia itself being invaded in some capacity, um, the signs were on the walls for something like this, especially in the fallout of the Kharkiv counteroffensive, where the Russians were shown to have whittled down their front line to such a degree that they were unable to hold it. And if they were doing that again on the front line of the war zone, it isn't that surprising that the border regions don't have nearly as much protection as well. So how they're going to react to this, whether they're going to redeploy a ton of troops from combat zones to try to protect the Russian border to stop something like this from happening again, whether they're going to, what, whatever the Russians are going to do in reaction to this, um, even if they try to salvage it at the end of the day by like really hammering the position and trying to push them out, the longer this goes on, the more humiliating it's going to be for the Russians. And no matter what, their propaganda victory from Bakhmut has been snatched, despite whether or not this was also an attempt to divert the Russians' attention away from other locations as the Ukrainian counteroffensives is anticipated what a crazy crazy news story man this stuff is this stuff really just feels unbelievable it feels like we're in some like alternative history scenario that something like this shouldn't even be possible uh the memes are fantastic though the memes around this are great hmm? i mean just this top tier stuff here's beetlejuice what are you doing hmm? what are you doing nothing me <laughs> Just hanging around. Just hanging around. You just hanging around. Got a little beetle juice. Oh, my goodness. My goodness. Russians invading Russia on Humvees. Lamau. That's the thing. I also saw pictures of what appeared. That's what I said about American material. It looked like some of the vehicles that were being used by the Freedom of Russia Legion were American Humvees, meaning that American, made in America, <laughs> made in America machinery just invaded Russia. The ultimate wet dream of every American weapon ever created. Oh my goodness. From everyone who's ever watched Red Dawn, if these reports are accurate, a US-backed invasion of Russia is currently underway. I mean, factually and technically true i mean it is you we do in, we do back the government of ukraine we are backing their military operation they're probably using american equipment to do it to some degree all in technicality that's true but i, I think it leaves out a lot of contents about a context about how you know the ukrainians were invaded <laughs> but technically it's true and that's how always michael tracy wins through technicality which is the best type of victory